So welcome to this Reimagining Recreating workshop with me today. Rosemary, I'm so glad you're here with Donna too. I see the comments pop up, so I might just be saying hi to certain people as they come in. And um, yeah, so um, we're going to start to just think about some, some things today together, do a little journaling, um, do a little art making. So before we begin to tune in and connect, I'll just um, introduce myself. I'm Rachel Chase. I'm an expressive arts therapist, a yoga teacher, a mindfulness practitioner, um, and I am also a life coach, and I've been teaching art for a very long time. Um, I started out as a dancer at a very young age and have always loved to make art. It was always a love of mine, so that led me to eventually get my fine arts degree in visual art and a master's in mental health counseling so that I could help people heal through the process of art making because that is what art has done for me. So for those of you coming back on to the live because the first one had to get shut down, welcome back into the Facebook Live with me. I'm Rachel Chase. Just sharing a little bit about my life and work um, before we begin, um, just to bring you into my world. And uh, so art has been a healing force for me in my life in, on many levels, uh, performing arts, visual arts. I've, I've, I've done theater and dance and choreography and um, kind of you name it, I've done it. I've taught children's art, I've taught adults art, and I use art in a way that is uh, process oriented. So what that means is we're going to kind of let go of the need to have any preconceived idea about the outcome or even about the process itself. Um, we're going to let the process lead the way. And that can maybe feel a little scary sometimes, like, oh no, I have a blank piece of paper. I don't know what to put on it. Ah, what do I do? So I really love to think about art making as a form of play. And when we play, we have um, access to toys maybe, or, um, you know, think of a soccer game, you have the soccer ball, you have the nets set up, you have the, the field and all the players are there. Any sort of play, we always have what we need on hand just in case we feel called to use it in a moment. And so today's process, um, I suggested that you have basically any art supplies that you have on hand because you'll be able to create this soul expression sign, I'm calling it, with um, any art supplies at all. And so I have some examples here I'll share with you um, and we'll talk about the themes of, of creating and talk about art as a healing um, activity and why we would even want to do that. You know, what's the point? <laughs> so um, before we do all that and unpack this idea of soul expression signs and get into the making process, because I want to make sure we have plenty of time for you to be in the zone, be in the flow, and just be making. So I'm going to guide us through a little bit of a mindfulness practice process first. And I always like to um, move the body a little and just kind of center my mind and calm my nervous system before writing or making art or working on a project because I find that helps with um, just letting that feeling of flow come in. And sometimes we're so rushed in our daily lives, right? There's so much to take care of that we're moving from one thing to another to another and we have this plan of action that we want to implement. And So I'd love for this to just be a ah, refreshing, sacred, relaxing experience for you. 
rather than a thing you have to hurry up and get to and be ready. And so if you're not fully ready, that's okay. If you feel like, oh, I forgot, there's some art supplies I wanted to use for this. Um, let me go grab that, maybe some pencils that you like. Or I like to put all my colored pencils out, get my markers out. I'm not going to use paint today, personally, but you're welcome to. If you have your paints, remember to have a little glass of water for your brush and a little towel or paper towel or something to dry your brush on. I've got a ruler for some reason. Maybe I'll need to make some lines. We'll see. Some pencils, some pens, different kinds of markers and pens, and some paper, different kinds of paper, just in case. <laughs> but maybe you already have like a an idea and you're like, I can't wait to make this thing. That's great too. So whatever works for you, however your process is, this helps me. I like to feel like I have everything I need, you know, on hand. That way I can just kind of grab it. Got some scissors, got a little bit of collage stuff. I actually went through some magazines last night and just tuned in and kind of cut some things up. I'll talk about that too. Got a little glass of water, got my tea. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. We're going to start with a little movement, a little breathing, a little centering. And I have my Tibetan singing bowl. So this is a great way to calm the mind, calm the nervous system, center in your body, and open the space for the creative flow to come through. All right, so I'm going to ring the the bowl here, ding the bowl, ring it, ring the bell three times. And I'm, I'm going to invite us all to just take some breaths. Every time I ding the bowl, just take another breath in and slowly exhale and listen to the sound as it fades into the distance. Okay, here we go. Three breaths. And a sigh. <sighs> hmm. Thank you for taking those breaths with me. So for a moment, just take in your surroundings and your space. Look around your room that you're in and just simply notice the light, the colors, maybe the sounds. Take some more breaths. Sway your body a little bit. A little bit of rocking is a signal to your nervous system to calm. Think of a, a baby, rocking a baby. Maybe you rock back and forth or you make little circles. Imagine your spine just kind of moving a little bit. If you need to stand and stretch, stand and stretch. Just preparing the space inside, the, the body and the mind. I like to rub my hands together too. That brings in some good energy. Ah, make some sound. Ah, ah. Those are all wonderful ways to release pent up emotions or stress. And then we're going to wind our wrists around. This kind of helps the hands and the wrists get ready to create art, to make, because we're going to be using our hands to draw and color. And The hands are the extension of the heart. In the yoga, we talk a lot about that. So breathe and circle the wrists around. Kind of makes sense, right? If you think about how 
the heart is about receiving love, right? And giving love. And our hands are about giving and receiving too, right? It's how we connect with each other. So I'm connecting with you and you're connecting with me, even though we're in cyberspace together. Even though you may be not here live with me now, you might be watching this in the future. We are connected. And that's a beautiful thing. Connection with ourselves and connection with each other are wonderful grounds for feeling safe to create. So take another moment and connect with yourself now. Bring your hands onto your heart and close your eyes for just a moment so that you can feel your heartbeat. Feel your breath go in and out. And then relax your hands and you can open your eyes and tap your feet on the ground a little bit just to feel the soles of your feet. Maybe rub your feet on the ground and feel the soles of your feet in your shoes or maybe your barefoot. Just feel the ground. Mmm, good. So these are all ways to prepare ourselves for the creative flow to come. I like to think of the soul as something that we're all connected with together and something that we each have within ourselves possibly the part of ourselves that we can think of as like the psyche you know the the dream essence the part of ourselves that dreams that that sees no boundaries and so today we're talking about signs we're looking at this concept of a sign so we're going to start by imagining and bringing in some memories or bringing in an experience that you recently had, perhaps. Now, I'll give you an example. I, I like to take walks as often as possible. I like to say every day, but it's not every day. I'm working on that. I like to walk every day. Um, I always do some kind of movement, at least. And when I'm on my walks, you know, is if you're not on your phone and you're just walking to walk and you see the trees, you see the sky, you feel the air, there's birds, there's animals, there's insects, there's the temperature of the air. You've got maybe thoughts going on in your mind and you're walking along and all of a sudden you're, you see a bird or you, something happens in your mind and you connect with it. You see a tree or you see an object or a flower and you go, aha, this thing, or maybe even it's a sign, like a street sign or a bumper sticker on someone's car, right? Or you're driving along and you're having a thought and all of a sudden you see a sign and you, you see someone or you, it, it's a message, right? There's some kind of symbol connection going on with our outer reality and our inner world. I like to think of that as the soul expression coming through. So we're making soul expression signs. And by sign, I mean that sign that gives you a message, something that's speaking to you, that life is saying, remember this. I want you to remember this. Don't forget. Don't forget because it's important. And usually these are reminders about how to maybe keep you safe, or how to uplift and inspire you or help to remind you of your abilities or your capacities or remind you to do something lovely for yourself. So this, I like to keep things too that remind me of moments. This feather represents a lovely time in my life. And when I think about that memory, it reminds me of a relationship, of a soul connection, of something that's very sacred about that relationship. And if I ever forget how special that relationship is for me, this feather will always remind me. So that's a sign. That could be a sign. Um, another example. I'm just going to share a little bit of show and tell here just to in, 
bring some inspiration and ideas for you of what you might create today too. Um, I was speaking of a walk and birds. Birds are very, uh, very symbolic, right? And uh, for me, I love birds. I love birds and I'm always listening to them and feeling into um, their energy because birds are so joyful, aren't they? they? They have so many different sounds and certain birds represent certain things. And I'm up here in Washington State, actually. I'm, yes, I'm an arts and wellness ambassador for the ACA and lived in the Central Florida area for a very long time. And I still love Atlantic Center for the Arts. I'm so grateful that they exist. Um, and we're so glad to bring this programming to you. So I'm walking along two days ago and I'm having these thoughts about my life and kind of feeling, remembering a song and I'm stretching and just kind of clearing some stress and I look up and an eagle flies right over me, a bald eagle. So I had this paper from a while ago that I was using to make some uh, some drawings on and that's one of the drawings and I I turn it over and I this is a very crude eagle this is not an illustration class <laughs> um, I, I do this kind of eagle but I wrote the word victory and then heart at the bottom and and then I drew this sort of other little symbol or shape below because that was the feeling I was getting was there was a sh connection with the eagle and my heart in that moment which kind of looks like that in a way. There's this flow of energy going on. So I like to make connections. And this is what I'm thinking of when I say sign. Connections. And then, it, of course, it's kind of like a sign, you know, with words and images too, right? Now, I'll probably color this in at some point. I was thinking I might do this today. I might. I might do this, I might do something else. I've got a couple other ideas that might come through. I might just make a fresh one. Here's something I made earlier in the year that's kind of like that, a little message to it's sort of a dedication to 2021. And then there's this line, right? This symbol, the shape. So in art, we use line, color, and shape, form, right? to express an idea, a feeling, or a story. And we're made up of stories. We are all stories, aren't we? Our lives are stories. Here's another one I made a while back, grounded, to remind me to connect with the earth and that feeling of being grounded. I brought these in because I felt they were very much a theme, themes for today. And this one is about being connected. Sometimes we need little reminders, right? And so that's what today is about. These little reminders from the soul, if you will, of those messages, those moments. So at this point, let's take um, a couple of minutes to either just sit and contemplate or perhaps write a little bit. This year we have had a lot to chew on. A lot has happened this year. And I think it's a good idea for us to just kind of reflect and take some breaths. And I'm inviting us to look for these moments in time this year where we've, even if there have been moments of heaviness and confusion and chaos, which there certainly have been, obviously, we're all going through this, change, this turmoil, grief, um, but there have also been moments of joy, right, and inspiration and connection. And I'd like for us to really tune in with that today to empower and grow that energy of support that's inside each of us through the making of these signs today. 
So take a moment to reflect on maybe something that's happened lately as I've been sharing about signs and the soul and connection. What's been popping up in your mind? Maybe the memories of those inspirational moments, those insightful moments. And just take a moment to think about those, reflect on those, and possibly do a little bit of writing about those. Just take a few, take a couple. And then I'll guide us into the process of making our signs, okay? But just think about those moments. Think about those messages. Maybe even just tune in and imagine that you're listening to your heart, to your soul, to that expression that wants to come through for you today. Maybe something fresh came through for you this morning. Maybe there's a reminder you'd like to give your future self. Maybe it's to remember to breathe. <laughs> or maybe it's just a word or two or three words that represent a very fond memory that you have from this year. A special, loving, inspirational moment that has happened for you this year that really stands out. So when we make these signs, we're expressing an impression about this memory. So I'd like you to write down or think about a color that you might associate with the message or the memory. Just think about that. What colors might come to mind as you think about this inspirational memory or signal from the universe? Think about the shapes associated with it. What shapes could be any shape at all, or symbols, imagery of some kind. So you have the words associated with it. So you're gonna write down those words, what they might be. For example, here I wrote victory and heart, right? But you might have a memory of something. Or you might have an urging that you feel like your soul is urging you to do something and you don't want to forget it. You want to make some art around that today. A symbol or a sign of a recognition, something to remind you. Now, I keep getting this message that says, rise and shine, rise and shine. So I think I'm just gonna make a new one today. I think I'm gonna write rise and shine with some kind of shapes and colored in with colored pencil. That's what I think I'm gonna do because that's what's coming to me right now. I wasn't expecting to do rise and shine, but I like that. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So pick a, pick something and just know that you, you might have multiple ideas and that's great. Maybe you can combine them or maybe you make one now and one later. So now that we're getting almost to a uh, half an hour mark here. I <laughs> see I wrote recreate with, and I spelled my name wrong. I was in such a hurry on the Facebook Live because the sound wasn't working on the first one. So then I had to redo the second one. So I typed it in real fast just so I could get the live going. We'll probably change that later. That's funny. <laughs> Maybe your message is forgiveness, kindness to yourself, something that reminds you to 
do something nice for yourself. So, so there's some ideas. Um, I also had some collages. So maybe you wanted to do some collaging. So this is a good time to just go through your magazines. And now that you have this idea of the shapes and the colors and the message, in fact, there was a word I might use in mine. Eureka stood out to me. I might use that too. So I'm not going to talk much now for a little bit, um, which means we're just going to be kind of creating together, exploring together, getting some inspiration. It's a really neat, beautiful Japanese art. <clears throat> so if you like to listen to music while you create, this is a good time to put on some music. I like to listen to music when I make art. It's very um, soothing and kind of keeps my mind in the flow. But maybe you just want to be in silence while you create. So we're going to go for it now. I'm going to go ahead and just start diving in and see what comes. This is the part of the process where we just allow it to unfold and see what comes of it. Just let it flow. I'll probably do some drawing with a marker first and then fill it in. Photography is a great tool for making signs too. Here's one. And then I'll be quiet after I show this one. <laughs> this was a message that came through. You are divine nature. And then I had this gorgeous image. I made some prints of this. So art as the messenger. All right. Let's see what comes of our creations today. Just let yourself stay present. Explore. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just for you. Something just for you. to help you connect those messages. I'm just making some lettering on my paper here. And then I'll color it in, decorate it. Maybe cut out some pictures and put those on there with it too. You might surprise yourself. The fun thing about this is that sometimes the messages come through as you're making the art. Maybe there are more words that want to be written. cut this picture out because it reminded me of connecting with the muse, the inner muse, the inspiration, having tea time. So I'm going to cut her out and put her in my sign. So far this is what I have. Rise and shine, listening, 
Listening was a word that wanted to come through. Sometimes when we're making it, we're confused and we, we don't even know what it means until it's over. That's okay, too. <laughs> That's kind of like how life is, right? <laughs> Just enjoying the process of making. Not worried about how it's going to all fit together exactly. Let it unfold. And if something doesn't go the way you wanted it to go in the moment, just do something different. That's a big lesson sometimes, right? Just letting go and doing something different. Yeah, that's, this year has been a lot of that, hasn't there? Yeah. No, I said I wasn't going to talk, but... <laughs> Sometimes wisdom just comes right through when we're in the process of creating. Makes me think of Bob Ross. Don't know if you know who that is, but he was a New Smyrna native painter. I used to watch his shows on PBS all the time growing up. Oh, neat. This is going to be really interesting. I have no idea how this is going to look. We're just going to keep playing and breathing. Reflecting, staying present to what you're doing, letting it unfold. This is fun. It'd be so fun to see what you all are creating. Maybe at the end of the video, take a little phone shot of your progress, how, your process. You may not even finish it at the end of this hour, but love to see at least what you have. Put it in the comments at the end of the video when, when we're done. I'd love to see what you, what your signs are, what your messages are. We can always get inspired by each other that way. It's a really great way to connect. All right? Oh, I see. So now I'm seeing why some of these images wanted to come through last night when I was looking through the magazines. See, I thought this image was about one thing, but now I'm realizing, well, it kind of is still about that, but it's a little deeper than that. Yeah. This is reminding me to Get up and write in the morning. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. It takes quite a bit of discipline, which is something I've had to work hard on my whole life. <laughs> I love to play, so that means I have a propensity toward just kind of going with the flow and improvising. Sometimes discipline is in order, <laughs> which is a good thing to be able to do the things that I know will really fill my soul, fill my cup. And one of those is writing. I love to write. So this image is of a hand. Isn't that neat? It's like reflection. It's like listening to the messages and then letting them come through the hand. That's pretty neat, huh? So I'm going to put that in there too, somewhere. Yeah. I'm 
and then I'll connect it all together with lines. You can just make some lines and color on the shape, make some shapes and lines and color them in. Kind of like I did with, with this. You know. Just let it flow. See what happens. Can't wait to see what you you make too. You know, when we if we were together live in the space, we'd be seeing each other making. But it's neat to know that you're there doing your thing while I'm doing my thing at the same time. Sometimes when making art, we we make something like a prophecy. That's a bold word, huh? Have you ever been writing something or drawing something, and then years later you look back on that and you go, Oh my gosh, this thing I drew is exactly what I'm experiencing right now. It's like a premonition, like vision boards. You ever done a vision board? So that's what we're doing. We're, we're creating ideas into form, letting the soul speak. So when you make these signs for yourself, these messages, it helps us bring the inner feeling out so that we can actually make it happen or allow it to happen. connect with those personal values that you have and reinforce them by having them around in your space to remind you. <laughs> mm. So as you're doing this, pay attention to how you feel while you're doing it. The thoughts that come or the emotions, the feelings in the body, your breath. Sometimes the marker runs it out of ink and you have to make do with what you have. <laughs> No rush, let's go slow.
<laughs> How's it going for you? Well, I start coloring outside the lines a little there. Not surprising. <laughs> Whenever that happens, it's a clear message to go ahead and start doing something outside the lines. Maybe that's a sign. <laughs> oh, wow. There's this music box here that just started playing right there in that moment. So I'm staying at an Airbnb, which is where I am. And I didn't even know this music box was here. Wow. Isn't that something? There's a picture of a little boy with an umbrella on top of it. Maybe one of you needs to see this. Isn't that interesting? Music. Hmm. Wow. That is so interesting. Wow. So what were you drawing or coloring or gluing when that sound went on there? Yeah. A little signal there, huh? Yes, this is uh, it's about serendipity, synchronicity. There are always synchronous things going on to offer us reassurance and guidance. Nature is always giving us those little messages. We just have to tune in and listen. That's what we're doing here today. Just tuning in and listening. Whatever wants to be expressed here. Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> I think we have about 10 minutes together left at least, at least for this hour. Certainly not an indicator that you need to finish anything in the next 10 minutes, but that that's how much more time we have left together. I hope that you take time after. Maybe you have already completed your sign. But I intend to finish mine for sure. Make it rich and full. This is what it means when we talk about expressive arts therapy. What makes it therapeutic is that release of emotion. There's that connection with insight that creates an awareness that is beneficial 
for you. It enhances your ability to feel connected with yourself and release some emotion. Express something that's inside and bring it out, which is therapeutic. It's a, th it's a therapeutic thing to do, isn't it? Talking, sharing. Sometimes it's just, it's not about using words. Sometimes it's about a movement, right? Or gesture. We're creating a sign for ourselves, just imagery or sound, music. Right. <laughs> Just picking what colors want to come here. We kind of start with our initial concept and line and shape and symbol, and then we just play. Just explore. Letting go of perfection. It's the thing about allowing ourselves to just let go of the need to control everything all the time gives us the opportunity to let that flow come through, let the natural flow of things show us something new that we hadn't thought of before. Fresh ideas, fresh insights can come. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> Just keep it flowing. Let it flow. come to toward the end of our time together here maybe you could type in the chat some of the messages that have come through in your art today mine was rise and shine listening and Eureka so I wonder what what some of your words for today are love to see that before we wrap up just to share with each other a little bit let's see if I can go into the comments again here let's see all right okay <laughs> We have some things coming in here. Let's see. Oh, good. Atlantic Center for the Arts. Yes, so there's a link in the comments that we'd love for you to follow. Um, these are our pre and post workshop surveys. It would be really great. Let's see. Donna's Nature Heals. Let it go, let it flow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I needed to hear that too. Thank you very much. 
Let's see. I'm going to pick a couple more colors here and just keep coloring it in a little bit more. Sometimes, you know, when you kind of feel like maybe a little stuck when you're making, you can just take a breath and restart again. What else? Rosemary has Shine Bright, Create Magic. Ooh, love that. Create Magic. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the, the heaviness of life sometimes, we, we forget about that magic sometimes, don't we? But it is always there. I, I'm a firm believer in that. It's always there. Just waiting for us to reconnect with it. Isn't it amazing how a flower blooms whenever we forget about the magic of life? Nature is always there to remind us. And I know the Atlantic Center for the Arts identity has everything to do with nature and art. And the founder of the ACA and the creators of the buildings there and the studio spaces and the work that Eve Payer does, um, the community arts at the ACA and her sound walks. It's all about that. The inner and the outer connection with sound and with imagery and with nature and how art is an extension of our true nature as humans. Humans live we play out these stories through our through our lives and our homes are expressions of that, right? Creative creativity comes out in many ways. So it's it's important, I think, to keep our creative lives moving along. Even if that just means whatever way you create, maybe gardening or home decor. Mm -hmm. Taking pictures. Whatever way fuels your creativity. So important. Some people say, I'm not creative at all, I'm not an artist. Well, creativity just means inviting in new ways of being, thinking, doing, relating. So you might get creative in your relationships. What are new ways that you can enjoy your intimate relationships? What fun things can you do together? Or what new ways can you express yourself together that reinforces how meaningful your relationships are to you. That's a way to be creative. It's also therapeutic. <laughs> I'm just having fun here, kind of doodling around with my sign, making it energetic. <laughs> Putting some more lines here. I'll show you what I have so far in a moment. And would love to see what you end up making. It's always nice to share with each other when we're doing these workshops. Because we can relate with each other with each other's experience. Now next month, I'll be doing another one. This summer, I've got one each month here on the Atlantic Center for the Arts Facebook page, doing Facebook Lives. I'm looking up the date here. And next month will be on Saturday, July 10th. And we'll be painting next month. So 
whatever kind of paints you want to use, watercolor or, or anything, we're going to be using paint in an expressive way, in a process-oriented way, to process grief and loss. And we'll talk about how beautiful that experience can be together to let our emotions through the paint just be just be released and be expressed and be connected with in that way. So let's take a closing moment together and just take a breath and be in gratitude for the space and time that you've created for yourself to remember those messages and those soul expressions that are coming through all the time. So here's what I have so far. <laughs> there she is sort of floating with a candle and a tea and she says, Eureka! And then the energy from the writing, the listening, rise and shine. So I'll fill this in after I get off here with you today. So much gratitude always to share space with you and enjoy the process of creativity and well-being. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and I'll be here next month on Saturday, July 10th, where we'll be painting together. So I invite you to join me then and um, go to the link for the post-workshop survey and enjoy the rest of your beautiful afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. Peace. Thank you so much. Again, I'm Rachel Chase and um, it's always a pleasure to connect with you in the Atlantic Center for the Arts. So bye everyone.